Hello people, let us look at some three mark questions in ENT. So the next question they have asked is the tuning fork test. So when they have asked tuning fork test, you will write Wichenol test, Rene's test, Weber's test, Absolute Bone Conduction test, Schwabach's test, Bing's test and Jail's test. Jail's test, is that the way? Okay. So look at the tuning forks. You have the 256, 512 and the 1024 um, hertz uh, frequency. So 512 is the most used. So these are the tuning forks. So Rene's test, first you will keep it on the mastoid process, right? The You have struck the tuning fork and you will keep it on the mastoid process. And when the bone conduction, um, they stop hearing, then you keep it, bring, bring it near the external auditory uh, canal and the person can continue to hear. So this is normal and uh, uh, this is positive. So a conduction longer than bone conduction. But this can also happen in sensory neural deafness. But if the negative Rene's test come, that means air conduction is less than bone conduction, it means conductive deafness. When will you give false negative? They will ask in the This is an important question that can give you one mark. <clears throat> false negative you will get if there is severe unilateral sensory neural deafness. Okay. So please, if there is severe, severe unilateral, unilateral is an important word. So unilateral sensory neural deafness. So what happens? There is transcranial transmission of the sound from one ear to the other. Bone conduction will happen to the other ear. So, so this is a very strange thing, right? You will get false negative even in sensory neural deafness. Strange. Okay, then moving on. Then what is the next uh, hearing test? Weber test. Weber test, you will uh, keep it on the vertex or the middle of the forehead or any midline bony structure. Midline, midline bony structure you should have. Remember something like this. Okay. So, this is the most sensitive tuning uh, fork test they are saying. Okay, that's good. And they, some people do it uh, first. Okay. Then, uh, basically on e both sides you should hear equally. But if there is lateralization, you can say one ear hears better than the other ear. Okay. So, this is uh, a bone conduction test, isn't it? You are keeping it on the bone and you are expecting the bone to conduct. So, now let us say, <coughs> um, on this side you have uh, a perfectly fine nerve and this side you have a improper nerve. So, what will happen? Bone conduction will happen to both. Undo. Bone conduction will happen to both. Wait, hold on. So, bone conduction has happened to both. But this side will not be able to conduct. So, what will happen? This side, this signal will go to the brain. And the person will hear via this side. So, what did you understand? Sensory neural uh, loss, wherever it is, it is there. On the contralateral side, the person will hear. As simple as that. Wherever sensory neural hearing loss is there, on the contralateral ear, he will hear better. So, there is lateralization to the contralateral ear. That as simple as that. So, it can also mean that there is a conductive loss in the ipsilateral ear. You will have to understand this one. Then the next um, tuning fork test, guys, that is the absolute bone conduction test. Here, you will occlude the canal. You are checking only bone conduction, right? So, you will occlude the canal. No need to hear via the air. So, you will occlude the ear canal with the stregus and you will um, ask the person to hear via the bone. Okay. So, you will checking only bone conduction. Schwabax test is just the opposite. Uh, basically, uh, you will not occlude the ear canal. But you will do the same thing. You will keep it on the person's uh, mastoid. And once the person stops hearing, you will transfer it to your ear. You are perfect. So, you should, whether you will continue to hear or not, you will understand, right? So, if you continue to hear, this person is having some sensory neural deafness. What do you think, guys? So, what do you see here in sensory neural hearing loss? The patient's hearing is reduced. As simple as that. So, you are comparing. This is a comparison test. And uh, did you understand, guys? There is one strange point here that the in conductive deafness, the patients hear, hear for longer time because there is no noise. So, in conductive deafness, he will hear better via the bone conduction. So, he will hear it for longer time. How will you do this? So, I am thinking you will have to first do it on the exam, uh, check on the examiner and then you pass it to the patient. He may continue to hear. Then you will know it is a conductive deafness. See, absolute bone conduction, there is there is absolutely uh, opposite here. See, in conductive deafness, the patient and the examiner hear the fork for the same duration. If the patient has conductive deafness, both of them will hear for the same duration. Because there is, anyways, you have occluded the canal, you only have created the conductive deafness. Both the patient and the examiner's uh, ear canals are occluded. Yeah, that makes sense. In sensory neural deafness, what happens? The patient uh, hears the focal fork for shorter duration. This makes sense because his nerve is damaged. Okay. Now, let us, let us look at Bing's test. Bing's test is uh, a little weird, okay? 
<clears throat> they are opening and closing, opening and closing, occlusion. Occlusion is alternate. They keep opening and closing. So, this is bone conduction only. You can see they have kept it on the mastoid process. Vibrating tuning fork is placed on the mastoid while the examiner <clears throat> alternately closes and opens the ear canal by pressing the tragus inwards. Okay. Look at this, guys. <clears throat> you will alternately open, close, open, close. There is no change in tuning fork um, position. <clears throat> what happens is, uh, let us say this person has conductive hearing loss. Okay. When, when there is conductive hearing loss, what will happen? Your occluding or opening, occluding opening will make no difference. So, there will there will be no change. So, that means what? Conductive hearing loss. This much is very easy, right? You can understand this much. But what happens in a normal person? In a normal person, you are using both. So, there will be difference, okay? And even if there is sensory neural hearing loss, there will be difference. He hears louder when the ear canal is occluded. When we close the ear, you hear better. That's strange, okay? So, basically this result is very similar to Rene, if you remember. See here, normal or the one with sensory neural hearing loss will have um, positive being test. So, normal will get positive. Okay, this is another test where normal people get positive. And uh, patient with conductive hearing loss, you will get negative. They will not be able to appreciate any change. This is also bone conduction, guys. Jail's test, Jill's test, Jill's test. So, this is also bone conduction, but here you are using a single speculum and you are checking the effect of increased air pressure. I am thinking how you need two hands for this, right? Two separate people will hold it or what? So, the speckle speculum will increase the air pressure. It will push the tympanic membrane and ossicles inward. They will go. Oh. And what will happen? Because everything goes inward, there is a immobility of the bestlar membrane and there is decreased hearing. Okay. But what happens whenever there is... Uh, but whenever the ossicles, that is the malleus, incus and stapes are not moving properly, let us say they are fixed or they are disconnected, okay. So, what happens in this uh, condition, there will be negative test. Negative means there is no change in the hearing. See, normal people, what will happen, everything will go inside, your hearing will reduce. But in these people, it is disconnected or not appreciate any change. So, that is what it looks like. But anyways, now they are not using this test. It is uh, superseded by tympanometry photosclerosis checking. Just remember that is, the result is very similar, uh, slightly similar to sim similar to Rene's test. A person who is normal or sensory neural hearing loss, they will get gels test positive. That means normally what will happen? You put pressure and your hearing will reduce, right? That's it. So normal you are. Okay. That's it. We covered everything, right? We covered all the tuning folk tests.